back to the tcg and we're gonna take a look at the first week of um results after the new forbidden and limited list of course the format is gonna change in a couple of weeks it still is important to understand how the situation is looking right now in order to maybe think about how the new stuff from phantom nightmare and maze of millennia is going to change and impact the format you want to understand the current situation as best as possible obviously and this was the first weekend of tournaments in 2020 24 we had a big tournament in germany on saturday it wasn't a regional or anything like that it wasn't anything official it was just a, i think they had about 250 people that one was taken down by i believe labyrinth and then on sunday we had the german open and we had the italian open with myself also i was at the german open shout outs to everyone i met shout out to all the people who came up and said hi i brought the bestial runic that we built on stream together last week i'm going to show you the exact list in a second i didn't do so well unfortunately but it was okay Okay, I went X3. I think uh, I learned a couple things about Runic Bestial. I knew them. I talked about it beforehand, but uh, it was it was just made a lot clearer to me now because I don't think I hit a single person with a Bestial where it actually hurt. <laughs> you guys remember how I've been saying freaking Runic decks are always very much uh, dependent on the environment that you play them in, the rest of the format? So even though the deck almost didn't change from last format, I definitely felt the absence of good matchups, you know, like no more unchains, no more tears that I saw. Speaking of tier, Drizzles, thank you for the nine months and congratulations on winning the, the German Open with tier laments out of all things. Yeah, let's just get into the deck and then we'll talk about how it performed and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, X3 not the best result. By the way, I think it's important. That's why I keep doing these deck profiles even from tournaments where I uh, don't do super well. I think it's important to look at the tournaments where you didn't do as well as you maybe hoped to because there's a lot to learn from that as well. In this case, I played Bestial Runic and I will. I want to say I, I don't think my performance was due to being unlucky or the deck list being bad or anything like that. I simply don't think bestial runic is as strong as a choice for the current format as it was for last it was already not the best deck last format it was like a comfort pick last format more on the, like, the tier 2 slash rogue category at least last format it had a lot of good matchups in the top tier decks like it was really good against unchained it was really good against tier and it was also good against lab and now the last ban list has pretty much completely eliminated unchained and tier not entirely freaking tier won the german open so it's not true but i didn't see many rather i didn't play against any tiers i didn't play against any unchains and i really realized you know okay a lot of my matchups here are very dice roll dependent because i played like three runic mirrors and the runic combo mirrors are relatively dice roll dependent not the best situation for the bestial runic deck and also bestials in general weren't that great against most of the matchups i played against anyways i keep talking too much requems two ecclesia and one golden sword soul this package was really good i played a mirror match in round two against patrick a friend of mine who played the same deck he was also on the ecclesia technology and i actually beat him in a feature match as well on the stream shout outs to lampy for hosting and streaming the event as well i beat him but i think he went 8-1 at the end completely undefeated after i beat him the deck is still able to perform anyways i'll show you the combo behind the ecclesia and the golden sword soul in a second I, this is the same lineup as for bologna and we've talked about cutting potentially one of these bestials rather one of these bestials in my last week's stream the problem is they all three fulfill a very important role that i felt like i wasn't able to cut them i don't think so serenir gives you access to regained and spoilers i took out one regain so i really wanted to have multiple serenirs to be able to access lubelion to have more consistent regained access that's why i didn't cut serenir obviously you don't cut magnamood the next obvious one would probably to cut baldrake because it's probably the worst bestial overall i don't think that was a good idea because baldrake is the only one that actually has defensive capabilities on the opponent's turn if i search druid swarm in my end phase with magnamood i have no way of turning that druid swarm into removal on my opponent's turn i don't end on ip i don't have like cartesia to fuse with it i don't have branded beast to tribute it and then send the card i have no way of turning druid swarm into a disruption the only one that does that on its own is baldrake right and i searched baldrake in my own end phase it was the most common search for my magnum so i don't think baldrake was cuttable at the same time druid swarm not being a disruption on your opponent's turn i still think it was way too important because it's a runic deck doesn't have a battle phase so the removal from druid swarm is also way too important long story short for individual reasons i think all the different bestials are too important if you're playing a bestial runic deck and that's why i didn't cut any and then i still play i guess it goes up here the 
always steal Alibur as a searchable tuner. Way too important. Then we have three Ash Blossoms as non-engine of choice still. Ash was okay. I wish I would have seen it a little bit more often. I didn't really see it in the important scenarios, but it was a fine choice, especially in a format where there's a lot of different things going on. You don't know exactly what you're going to face. Ash is fine. You know, it's good against the Runic decks. It's good against Fire Kings. Good against Rescue Aids. It's got its uses in every matchup. I like it. And then we had the same amount of Runics, which I'm going to be honest with you. Some of my losses were still due to not seeing enough Runics or not drawing Runics with Fountain. I wish I had one more and then obviously two Fountain, one Regained, and I still played two Dualities. So obviously the changes that we discussed on stream last week, I took out one Cartesia, one Duality, one Regained for two Ecclesia and the Golden Sword. So the reason why I kept playing Duality, I was struggling. I was sitting here Saturday night, moving cards around on my desk, being like, should I play Duality? Should I not play Duality? I really wanted to try without Duality, but then I gaslit myself into putting it back in because I was already down on one regained. And I was like, what if I run out of extra deck cards? I need the recycling. It's a good discard for Hugin. Worst case, if I don't need to dodge Imperma Veiler, I was just scared of running out of my extra deck cards. Looking back, I think... I would go play one extra runic and one extra ecclesia instead but duality wasn't bad i don't think it was a duality issue the card is fine in this deck i like it i think i would try it without moving forward so obviously the main deck is 40. the extra deck is almost the same which by the way people have been saying cut sleipnir i don't understand this card single-handedly came up four or five times yesterday and has won me a lot of games i like this card a lot i think it's phenomenal i i wouldn't play a runic deck without it anymore i don't think unless you have like big issues issues with space in the extra deck, which this deck doesn't really have that major space issues but yeah and then obviously still the alvain and then a new card that came in for the fabled unicorn centurion legatia was a card that looking back at ycs bologna i should have already played it there and it's came up three or four times i like this a lot draws you a card gives you a way to synchro in weird scenarios where otherwise you wouldn't be able to synchro like lubelion plus level four coral dragon plus bestial those are the two main scenarios for this draws you a card going second it's even removal when you don't have a battle phase you can still pop something which came up just being as flexible as possible with how you can combine your cards i think is the main way to describe it also funnily enough it protects your sp from being attacked over because it says monsters with 2000 or less attack can't be as destroyed by battle which did matter one time where my opponent was not able to force my sp with the battle phase because they just can't attack over it while you have this and then the rest is still you have the four level tens all 100 needed scarlight coral dry edge sp and typhon which i pulled by the way i pulled the uh, starlight typhon in my entry packs which i guess i used up my luck for the day with that yeah the extra deck is the same as it was for bologna if you were to swap the duality out i would suggest the second little knight that was by far the extra deck monster i was missing the most there was at least two games that i lost that i would have won with the second little knight i made only two changes to the side deck i took out phantasme and i took out denko because i really didn't think denko was necessary anymore and, and phantasme didn't have enough matchups where it could come in i wanted one more hand trap that i could pair with nibiru to stop something like baron but i also wanted it to be able to hit hugin against other runic decks in the draw phase that's why i didn't pick effect veiler but i also wanted it to be able to be used after i use abyss deal and that's why imperm is weird and so that's why i decided to play mourner and i added two pancratops and a duster to try it out i am um sad to report that i didn't like pancratops as much i drew it a couple times and it never felt like it did enough I'm not sure. Duster was good in theory. I never drew it. The side deck didn't feel that great to me because I mostly, I was too worried on Saturday to how to build the main deck. The side deck was kind of like a last minute thing. And I didn't know exactly what to expect. Like I didn't expect to play against three runic decks in the first four rounds. Scarlight is the best card in this slot, I think, because it's not for duality. I don't tribute Lubelion for duality that often to make this. This is mainly a way to clear your opponent's board without a battle phase. This is the main reason why I use this card. It's not mainly here for time. It's not mainly here for duality. It's mainly just a good level eight synchro for this deck particularly. You can like make this blow up your opponent's board and then tribute it for Lubelion from the graveyard because it's a dark dragon. This is what it's mostly used for, right? All right. The Quem combo. As a comparison, why I decided to go Ecclesia over Cartesia. Previously, Quem via Cartesia was access to two level four tuners, right? That was the point of playing Quem is you go normal summon Quem, send the level four tuner from deck to graveyard, summon Hugin, and then bring back the level four. That way you have two level four tuners out of one card. 
Very good. Quem still does that, but now it does even more because Ecclesia is already two tuners. Because Ecclesia summons Golden Sword Soul from the deck, and what Golden Sword Soul does is if a monster is banished face up, except during the damage step, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard, special summon a light spell caster monster from your hand or grave whose attack equals its own defense. So after you Ecclesia tribute to summon the Golden Sword Soul, if you synchro with it later on if you resolve a runic to banish a monster off of your opponent's deck or you resolve a bestial to banish a monster from the graveyard you can banish the golden sword soul from the graveyard to bring back the ecclesia and this is how the ecclesia alone is two tuners right which in return makes quem which previously was two tuners now makes it three because it's quem itself ecclesia which is two is three tuners right and so in an ideal world it's not that hard to do if you open quem access to a bestial and any runic what you do is you go quem you send ecclesia to the graveyard you activate freezing curses to bring out hugen you activate hugen or not and this for this example it doesn't really matter but quem brings back the ecclesia the ecclesia summons the golden sword soul so here this is normally where you would already be with if this was cartesia you know you would have two tuners you would be done here basically with the amount of tuners you would get right so you make a level six synchro i usually make tri edge in this scenario to draw a card and then i make a baron and this is where previously it would end with the tuning combos right like quem plus runic would make a baron for free get the fountain and then if you had a lubellion on top you could like uh, get regained and make an sp with bestial plus another runic usually but what you could do now is you use the lubellion in this case you would fetch a magnamute summon the magnamute by banishing the tri edge from the graveyard and then the golden sword soul triggers because a monster was banished face up and it revives the quem from the graveyard here and now you can make a this patter the coolest thing about this is that the this patter brings the golden sword soul back into rotation you would then tribute the this patter for lubellion grab the regained you can make a legatia here draw another card on the opponent's turn you use a bestial or use a runic then trigger the golden sword soul to bring back the quem to send another ecclesia from the deck if your opponent summons from the extra deck the quem brings back the ecclesia as well a lot of three bodies that are relatively hard for your opponent to deal with because they already have to deal with the other stuff that you have and running over these is not easy because legatia stops them from being destroyed by battle and so on and so forth right if you open ecclesia the combo is almost the same as it used to be with quem because ecclesia is two tuners but now if you open quem it goes completely nuts because it gives you access to three tuners and more in the long game because the golden sword soul you are able to loop it back into the graveyard with this pattern and stuff like that it's pretty cool and i'm convinced that this version is better than what i played at um ycs bologna but the thing that changed once again the thing i want to emphasize on which is very important i've talked about it a lot on recent streams is how runic decks even if this deck in its core is still exactly the same as before the ban list with very simple logic you could just say okay other decks received some hits this deck didn't this deck even got better with this version i think and it still doesn't perform it doesn't feel as good as it did before the badness why is that that's because runic decks i feel like are majorly dependent on the environment that they're in and what i mean by that is that this deck heavily benefited from the fact that the bestials were such good non-engine last format unchained tier felt like such good matchups for this deck and let me tell you my matchups in the tournament yesterday were not kind for bestials three fire king decks three runic decks vanquish soul i played against one blackwing which i lost to but bestials would have theoretically been good but i didn't have any the environment has changed i think it's not very good for bestial runic specifically because the bestials are, don't really feel like non-engine anymore at this point at this point they feel like combo pieces they're still good cards but it doesn't feel like they're actually stopping your opponent from doing anything right like at ycs bologna if i went if i lost a dice roll and i opened a bestial i felt at least somewhat capable of grinding with most of the decks that people played right now it doesn't really feel like the bestials accomplish that much on their own which doesn't necessarily mean that runic decks are dead the deck is still very much capable of doing well but i'm not even sure if this is the best version of, of runics right now if you want to play a runic deck I, I feel like some other runic vari variations might even feel better maybe you have to cook something up i'll be honest with you i'm not disappointed i mean i was hoping to do better of course i'm not going to sugarcoat it. i was hoping to do better because i like this deck so much and everything and i 
I felt uh, okay going into the event with it, but I didn't expect as much because I knew Unchained was gone. I knew Tier was going to be way less popular than before. So I didn't expect to have a lot of good matchups. I expected it to be more like an uphill battle and it was. So it's okay. It's okay. It was worth a try. I think it was fun. The matches I lost just so i don't make shit up okay so round one i win against fur higher runic sprite which was honestly probably down to the dice roll and nothing else to be honest like there's a lot of things that i like about runic decks but combo runic mirrors are not good well there is skill involved 100 but uh most of the time if both players are somewhat competent and don't break the player going first is very much favored round two was a feature match you can probably still watch it it's with german commentary but it was not very exciting and then round three i lost the black wings yes i lost the black wings and then they were like oh if because you lost to black wings you now have to admit on stream that black wing is a is a good deck which um i said no i won't i'm not lying to my stream but okay also you guys be careful the black wing community is probably very happy right now because i've been hating on black wing in the past well i've been saying i don't like black wings you know and they've been insulted they were like oh don't talk shit on my black wings you guys be careful you guys know what happened to math mech circular be quiet okay be quiet we've defeated math mech rika has taken huge hits if you guys are not careful Samoon is the next circular, okay? I'm just saying. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. It's up in the air only because you won a freaking dice roll against me in round three of a regional, okay? If you're not careful, people are going to come to me in a year and ask me to sign their Samoons, all right? So... Calm down. Round four, I win the dice roll against Runic Life Twin Sprite. I don't think this one mattered as much, the dice roll, because this is one of the matchups where the base deals were actually going to be good, even going second. Round five, I lose the dice roll to Vanquish Soul. This one was Pankratops' fault. During siding before game three, I look at my side deck and I'm between two cards, right? I'm between Droll, which is really good against the really powerful Vanquish Soul openers that have like Jiao Long, Fenrir, Horger Draw, Mad Love Search, all that, right? If you Droll that, it's really powerful. Or I side in Pankratops plus Feather Duster instead of the Drolls, right? Because Feather Duster covers for like Imperms and the Trap card and Pankratops, I felt like was just like generally okay, you know, just like go oh, battle phase, force something. I like the droll more in theory but i saw shifter in game two by banishing it with runic so i was a little bit scared of siding droll and then just getting shiftered i decided to take the pancratops for a spin you know try out the pancratops i opened pancratops and their hand would have died so hard to droll and lockbird they had almost the same as game one it was like fenrir search stake your soul raisin search jiao long search mad love search it was everything man i wasn't able to beat it one week weird thing that i didn't think about beforehand it was kind of an oversight was the fact that pankratops has freaking zero defense it's terrible like mad love just forces it which did happen that was annoying round six i beat fire king tri brigade even though i lose the dice roll that's fine round seven i beat fire king 2-0 this one i remember i i go first i win game one game two i did roll them and then they rolled me for two turns in a row but i was still able to come out on top droll was a very popular card <laughs> this weekend <laughs> for both me and my opponents is something i'm just now realizing i think most matches either i was playing under droll constantly or my opponent was playing under droll it was it happened a lot round eight was the only time in the entire tournament that i lost a game going first the deck overall was fun i enjoyed the tournament run most of the games were pretty good except some of them you know not not all the games can always be good but it was okay i mainly learned i don't think runic bestial in this current format the way the decks play out right now is the way to go i don't think so I, it's still playable it's good you know you have a couple good matchups but i really felt the absence of quote-unquote free matchups right because it's really important throughout an event to not only have like very close matchups, right? Like you need a good matchup here and there. But Runic Bestial has a lot of matchups that you can win every matchup, but you can also lose every matchup, which makes it like most likely your result in like nine rounds is not going to be 9-0 because someone is going to win the dice roll against you or you might break against someone in one of the games going first. That can absolutely happen. Noticed a lot of matchups yesterday where like, okay, if I had lost this dice roll against Runic Fur higher i probably would have lost the lack of the unchained and tier decks is something i really noticed but yeah i don't expect to do well every single time it was okay i like the deck uh it's it, it was fun but i think it is time to move on in 2024 in like a different direction maybe runic maybe no runic i don't know it's the year of the fire we'll have to see